Good morning. Let's look at cumulative practice test number three. Question 22, AP 3.22. We have a random sample selected from a population. The proportion of those in the sample will be calculated. How will the margin of error for a 95% confidence interval be affected if the sample size were increased from 50 to 200? Um, so, with this type of confidence interval, our sample proportion is our point estimate, plus or minus z star, times the square root of p hat, 1 minus p hat, over n. Uh, and we're asked specifically for the margin of error, so the margin of error is just this latter part, so we don't really need this particular part here. And we're asked, if we increase n, how will the confidence interval change? How will the margin of error change? So we're keeping p hat the same, and we're keeping z star the same. All that we're changing is n. So if you take a bigger sample, you're going to get more precise uh, estimates. You're going to have a smaller margin of error. So the margin of error will not remain the same. The margin of error will not multiply by 2, and the margin of error will not multiply by 4. So the margin of error is getting smaller. So if n is 50 here, the margin of error is going to be smaller if we increase the sample size to 200. So it's either going to divide by 2 or 4. Um, how will it change? Well, one approach you can do is just plug some numbers in and see how it changes. So let's do that. Uh, Z star would be 1.96 for 95% confidence. Uh, we don't know P hat, so let's just, you really could use anything you want, but let's just use 0.5 in here, and we'll plug 50 in and see what we get for the margin of error. So plugging in 50, plugging in 200. Uh, on this side, we get a margin of error of 0.14. On this side, we get a margin of error of... 0.7. So how much did the margin of error change? Well, that looks like it halved from what it was originally. Uh, rather than plugging specific numbers in, another approach that you could take, a uh, little, maybe a little more conceptual, but the approach we did at the top is entirely acceptable. If you did that on a free response, I would just show your work and explain what you're doing. Explain about assuming the 0.5 for p hat. Uh, but another approach, uh, algebraically, basically what's going on is uh, you have this formula, z star, p hat 1 minus p hat over n. And basically we're comparing that with the same formula, but now it's not 50 is n, but 200. 200 is 4 times 50. So if we were to simplify these radicals, we're basically comparing um, the square root of n on the left with the square root of 4n on the right. So how do these two denominators compare to each other? Well, if you take the square root of 4n, that can be simplified to 2 times the square root of n. So we have some numerator over square root n on the left. We have 1 over 1 over 2 times the square root of n in the denominator. So how do these two compare? Well, this is 1 half of this one. The square root of n's are the same. The only difference is 1 over 2 on the right and 1 over 1 on the left. So multiplying your sample size by 4 will reduce your margin of error by 1 half. And that's kind of um, a basic truth if you have your sample size, which is n. If you quadruple your sample size, then your margin of error will be 1 half of the original margin of error. This is one issue with uh, increasing the sample size to reduce your margin of error. The issue is 
you'd have to quadruple your sample size to have your margin of error. So it's not enough just to like take a couple more people in your sample if you want to reduce your margin of error. You'd have to quadruple quadruple your sample size just to have your margin of error. Thanks for watching this video.